What's up guys? Um, welcome back to the DR100 Watt Concept, the Class D Power Amplifier Project. And in this video, let's take a deeper technical know-how on the firmware programming with the Intel 8051 core, the microcontroller from Intel. So let's dive to that. To program the Intel 8051 core, we will need an IDE that is the integrated development environment to make our programming easy, concise, lean, and organized. To make that happen, I use the basic language. I choose the basic language because it is easy to understand. It's a basic for starters like you, myself, and others, especially for students and DIYers. To download one of the basic IDE, open your browser like the Google Chrome and type mcselect.com and there you are. You will be taken into the website of Mark Alberts from Holland, the Netherlands, the designer of the basic IDE for the 8051 as well as for the ABR Micro. Find the download section and choose the Bascom 8051 demo. Download it as a normal download file. Download as well the 8051 manual in PDF format. To make it easy working with your programming files and examples, data sheets, create a dedicated folder in your hard disk in your computer. Then make the installation folder, program exercise folder, datasheet folder, video folder, and etc. Copy the Bascom setup demo and the 8051 manual to this folder. You will find it convenient later if you do this. By the way, I'm using Windows operating system in my PC and currently I'm using Windows 7 but I also use a Windows 10. Once you copy the 8051 setup demo into your dedicated folder in your computer, double click the setup demo to install the IDE and it will install like a normal Windows program. After the successful installation, the installation will drive you to reset your PC. Once your PC reset and the Windows load normally, Open the Bascom 8051 program and there you are. Welcome to the Bascom 8051 programming. So uh, what we can do here? Well, uh, let's dive into our very first program even we don't have the hardware yet. That's quite aggressive actually. But don't worry, by using such example, we will learn to use the IDE into its powerful simulation features. All right, uh, let's write our very first program on the text-based editor window. For the time being, let's just write the program and step-by-step step go through it. At the end of the program, we will know how to use the simulator and what our program can do. Let's run on the mouse. Click the file, point to the new project, and this will create a new window with the file name, no name one. Write the following instruction as uh, p3.6 is equal to 0, press the enter key, write do, press the enter key, write uh, wait ms space 10, press the enter key, write loop, press the enter key, and finally write end, which means it's the end of the program. Save the program into your dedicated folder name it as p3.6 underscore logic underscore low you just save your very first bus com program or bus file the next thing for you to do now is to compile the program into a hex or bin file meaning you will need to transfer the bus file or the basic file into the mcu known file as binary file or hexadecimal file. To compile it, click the compile icon or press F7 and the IDE will do the compilation. If you go to the folder where you save the bus file, you will see that there are added files like the bin file, hex file, simulation file, 
and other files that is needed. If there is no error during this compilation, definitely this is called a successful compilation. The next thing for us to do now is to simulate the program inside the IDE. I think this is one of the most exciting part uh, so that uh, we can see exactly what our instruction is doing. Now, click the simulation icon or press F2 and the IDE will open the simulation window. You will see here the play icon, pause icon, stop icon, and other icon that you will need in the simulation. Press the LCD hardware emulation and uh, it will take you into a hardware LCD and a port windows. Let's focus our attention on the port, particularly to port 3, bit 6. For the time being, we just understand that this is one of the pins of the microcontroller which we wanted to go from logic 1 to logic low. Well, just keep watching it and it will let you know the importance of this simulation. To run the simulation, click the play icon on the simulation window while watching port 3 bit 6 or p3.6 and you will see that it became dark red. It means the logic changed from 1 to 0 denoted by the instruction p3.6 is equal to 0. It means this instruction has been executed. The zero means actually is logic zero. You will notice that in the simulation port window, only the P3.6 changes color from light red into a dark red since this is the only instruction we wrote in our program, again denoted by the instruction P3.6 is equal to zero. You get it? You got it? Just to complete the explanation of our instruction, the do loop is what we call the control loop instruction. It's basically an endless loop that it keep running between the do and loop instruction. Inside the do loop instruction, the wait ms10 is a delay instruction which in this case is used as a dummy command to slow down the simulation execution to avoid that kind of screen flickering and uh, so that we can see the program tracer running between the do and loop instructions. And finally, the end instruction is a command that tells the Bascom compiler that this is the end of the program. To know more about the Bascom instruction offline, open the PDF file that you downloaded the Bascom 8051 help reference document and you will see here all the basic instructions along with their explanations and examples. You can also invoke this document from the IDE by pressing F1 and all of the capability to see the content and be able to search a specific instruction fast. I really thanks Mark Alberts, the designer and owner of Bascom 851 for having this reference document. Let's go back into our program and associate our program with the hardware so we can understand clearly the effect of putting P3.6 into logic zero. What is the purpose, you may ask? Well, uh, to use the simulator actually, we need to step up our imagination a little bit. Sounds like uh, we imagine to connect an LED into P3.6 in the current sync configuration and we wanted to make the LED lighted forever. And there you are, the schematic of that imagination. And in the real world, if you load the hex program into the MCU, then the LED will light up forever while the DC power is on. Well guys, uh, this is the end of our episode 1. It is not much about MCU programming, but uh, 
it is start up us to get to know our IDE and how to play around the simulation even without our real world hardware. In our next video on episode 2, we will going to put the port 3 bit 6 or P3.6 into logic 1 and logic 0 alternately. We will write our program and we will see the simulation effect. Stay tuned for episode 2. Guys, I hope you learned from this video and if it will suit your microcontroller programming, kindly subscribe to my free DIY learning. Share it to your friends, share it to your DIY friends who are building audio who would like to have a powerful human machine interface using 8051 micro. Share it to students who are learning embedded software programming. And before you sign off, click my icon my picture in order for you to subscribe and click the next video to know more about my 8051 microcontroller programming used in the class D power amplifier the DR100 watt concept project bye for now and see you in the next video